This is the Truth Network. Welcome to Running With Horses, a podcast devoted to inspire you concerning a relationship with Almighty God that empowers you to accomplish things you never thought possible. Shirley Weaver wants to take you there. And now, here's today's episode. Hey everyone and welcome back. There are several things that take place about this time of year every year. Well, there are many, but several that we want to touch on today. First of all, there was an event that took place in my nation 22 years ago this year, 9-11. You probably know the story of that event. We're, we'll talk briefly about that event. Also, this month, nationally and internationally, the month of September, is the time where we recognize the um, increase of suicide in the lives of people worldwide. And lastly, an emphasis on your role as an individual and as a family from a prophetic standpoint. That is, by prophetic, I mean a sense of what God is saying and how we participate in that. So three things, 9-11, this um, really epidemic of suicide worldwide, and then we'll just filter right down to the influence that all of this has in individual lives and in the life of our families. First of all, 9-11, on a Tuesday morning in 2001, that would be 22 years ago this year, we had several teams that were dispatched for prayer ministry, and we were about to fly internationally for other connections. So we had a team in Mobile, Alabama, that were participating really in training for worldwide intercession. That includes local intercession, but it also expands to worldwide intercession. And also another team about to depart four days later for Europe. And I want to say that that morning, so much you know, it, it just, things just come to a standstill. And you are sort of in disbelief and amazed. I think the word is amazed as it hits you what is happening. And I say that from the standpoint of these teams that I just mentioned to you. The mission for both, the local mission in Alabama, the state of Alabama, and also our mission in three nations in Europe. These were connections that we were making with other ministries and other teams to operate in intercession and prayer for other nations, for other ministries. So you know it is a function of go ye into all the world. It is a function of serve others Take the gifts and the callings that you have and sow those into other people. And that morning in particular, I find it paradoxical. I find it paradoxical that as our nation, my nation, and my fellow citizens were attacked you came away with this sober assessment, so to speak. How could you be hated, hated, the force of hate, to that degree? Not that we're perfect, but that level of hate. At the same time, many Americans, like those participating on our teams within our ministry, were in, again, like at the very same time, pursuing projects to benefit other nations, their citizens, to build them up, to encourage them, because you know, we all need each other. And others from other nations 
also frequently make their way to the United States to bless us. So it works both ways, this morning in particular, because we had team members in the air as the buildings in New York City were destroyed, those planes were grounded. And each one of these team members were forced into a position to decide what to do. They were far from home. We're not professional travelers or anything like that. But you know that the whole process of going into all the world to be about the Father's business does tend to equip you. And at a time like that, you know, I think of the expression that the elite fighting teams use, when things speed up, things slow down. So when there is a threat or a crisis or a provocation to fear, When we are trained in the Word of God and in the things of God's peace that pertain to His peace, we do tend to think very rationally, very clearly, so that we understand what's happening and know what to do. That is through the Holy Spirit, no question. That was the case for us for our team that landed, was forced to land suddenly in Atlanta, and then find their way home somehow, along with thousands and thousands of other people trying to do the same thing. While the question was out there, what is coming next? Are we under attack? From the outside, from the inside, what's going on? And I can't tell you how powerful the peace of God is at a time like this. Because you know, families care about families. And when you have a family member that is on a team like that and they're in harm's way, what does the family think? How does the family react? You know, God's peace, when we know that we're called to something, that we're doing His bidding, you cannot do better than that. You really cannot do better than that. So when things speed up, things slow down. And to that point, I want to say, God bless America, because as an American, I know fully well it is not an option to put my head in the sand and believe that everything is perfect, that we are perfect as a nation, anything like that. And as a believer, we have this compulsion to go into all the world. It's a mandate, you know, to, here's why, to make disciples. I just heard an excellent teaching on the ninth chapter of Acts, and something stood out to me as verse 25, because I had never really noticed this before. Various translations say the disciples lowered Paul over the wall. Some translations say the disciples. Other translations, it looks to me like more translations say his disciples were engaged. There is one other reference that says other followers. So the idea is disciples, but I want to press into his disciples. Here's the verse. But under cover of night, his disciples took him and let him down over the city wall, lowering lowering him in a large basket. Now, you know the relationship between a teacher and their disciple or their student, that is a special relationship. The Hebrew word, Talmudim, is a special relationship. 
And the emphasis here is that it was Paul's disciples. Paul became a disciple of the Lord Jesus. You know that story. But then he made disciples. And his disciples were involved that day in rescuing him because, you know, the religious leaders wanted to destroy him. They wanted to kill him because of the message he preached. So his disciples, those he had trained, he had taught, those he was in special relationship with, and those that he took responsibility before the Lord to teach, he responded to the go ye admonition, you see. Well, that's you and me. We make disciples. We make Talmudim, those that we are responsible to train. That's what we were doing that day. Our, our teams stateside and our teams about to fly out for, there were three nations really, Wales, Germany, and Albania, just so happened that was the combination at that time. This was 22 years ago this year. But four days after the attack on our country, we had teams leaving the United States for other nations to benefit, to bless, and to help in any way that we could. Why were we doing that? Because God said to. And it, it, it goes without saying, it wasn't like there was a benefit in a natural way. No one was paying us. We weren't benefiting in that sense. Actually, we were giving of our own resources. You see what I'm saying? This is the power of God, the power of the gospel. You cannot beat this plan because it works in the human heart and it cannot be dispelled and it cannot be there, there isn't a gainsay. There isn't any way that you can override the plan that God has in place. Let me say it again. The Lord appeals to my heart, and I submit to Him, using me as the example. I submit to Him, hear His voice uniquely for me, the way He's gifted me, the way that He calls me, and sends me, and I will say there's always sacrifice involved. But you know, it's so pleasant, so pleasant. And then, because of God's calling and what He's done for me, I sow that into the lives of other people, those that live next door to me, across the street, in the congregation I am a part of, in neighboring states within my own country, but also in other nations. That is just the way we think. That is so built in to the life of the believer, the life of the disciple. At the same time, we, re we remember this event. This month, the month of September, again, in our nation, is National Suicide Prevention Month. But there is also an International Suicide Prevention Day, September 10. This, this Sunday, I said December, scratch that, <laughs> September. Did I say September or December? Anyway, September 10, International Suicide Prevention Month. You can tell, listen, you can tell how tender my heart is in this area. You want to say the right thing. You want to bless and encourage. Because people are dealing with things 
And it's not just the effect of chemicals in their brains. I believe it is the aggressive and heavy energy that is coming from outside. By outside, I mean the attack of the enemy. I think this is worth talking about. People tend to blame themselves for things that happen. But for example, some people, for some people, the enemy is just zinging them. Let's make this personal. The enemy may just be zinging you. Shot after shot after shot, slapped down again and again and again. That is demonic energy. That is not coming from inside you. And it's not necessarily um, a physiological thing. I'm not sure that's the right word. You know what I mean? From your makeup, (laughs) from the inside of you, it's an outside energy. And our response goes along with the promise of God's healing in any area. Every individual wants to feel better. They want to feel peace again. That's the search. That's the object. So this conundrum that we find ourselves in is the multiplication of this kind of demonic energy, heavy, aggressive energy assigned against some people. It is my fervent belief those same people have a specific task They are uniquely gifted to accomplish that is a a part of the attack of the enemy against them. I want to say this well. I'm not saying that any one person is more subject to the enemy than another. I'm just saying the way you are built, you are uniquely built by Almighty God to do certain things and the components of your nature that combine together to make it possible to accomplish those things are the things that you become susceptible to from this aggressive energy side. So to be clear, during this time where There is not only a spiritual emphasis on those going through this kind of challenge, suicide, because, you know, there are secular influences that have their say. That's fine. But our view and our message is there is a God in heaven. There is. And His deliverance is available for you, to you. I'll say it again. There is a God in heaven, the Almighty God, and His deliverance is available to you and for you. Whatever area of oppression you find yourself in including the dark force of suicide. And lastly today, you know, if we bring all this together, the things I've explained about the power of discipleship, the way the enemy counters that to target us, to stop us, For every individual and every family, you are probably experiencing really hard things right now. Some of you, in an ongoing way, over a long period of time, are especially serious in nature, are both put together. I want to encourage you, now is the opportune time to develop your very own end time strategy. You know, the word says, occupy until he comes. That's the idea. That's the plan. That is your end time strategy. The challenge may be great. 
Some nations are more vulnerable than others, but your end time strategy includes this goal to fully occupy until he comes. And you know, I always say that prophecy helps here because when we can see something prophetically, by prophetically, I mean to see the way God sees because he is inspiring us. We do everything based in his word and we appeal to his presence. But once we do that, we expect to hear something to receive something that makes us able to function in a helpful way, something to improve not only our lives, but the lives of other people. We have a sense of being able to see ahead. And I don't mean anything mystical or strange or otherworldly, you know, or any of that. I don't mean any of that, but rather We are looking for the leading of the Lord, and let's face it, He knows everything. He's going to show you things you don't know. And if you're really sensitive, if you're really determined to hear Him, it is almost as though you can see around corners. You have a sense of what is coming, not in a fearful way or in a self-preservation way, but in the sense of Kingdom of God come, will of God be done. That's the mission. That's the plan. That's the strategy. That's how we think. That's our worldview. That's what we want. That's our DNA. That's where we sow seed. That is our end time strategy. Whatever you're going through or experiencing, no matter how hard, no matter how serious in nature, you have the hand of God on your life. You have his leading because of the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. And your mission is clear. And your contribution is a wealth. It is a wealth. It makes you wealthy. And it builds the kingdom of God. So these three things, in a time when hate is released, as it, as it was on 9-11, let me say that again, <laughs> in a time when dramatic hate is released and on display, as it was at 9-11, Actions of men inspired demonically, I believe. And in a time when suicide is growing and is rampant again, I believe a provocation of the enemy to take advantage of something that's precious to the Lord. In this time, this very same time, As an individual and as a family, you and I have an end-time strategy to occupy fully until He comes. We are not fearful. When things speed up, things slow down, and we see clearly, we hear Him clearly, and like Issachar's race, we have an understanding of the time and know what we ought to do. We understand the kingdom We understand God's Word increasingly because we're growing in the things of faith. I pray for you today this very way, that in, as an individual and as a family, you see clearly, you understand completely the mission God has for you, and you understand the corresponding blessing. Here's the declaration, Kingdom of God come, will of God be done right here on earth, just like it is in heaven. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support this podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. Don't forget to check out the show notes 
or visit aclearTrumpet.org, where you can subscribe to Shirley's email list. Download the ministry app and purchase your very own copy of Shirley's 365-day devotional, Running With Horses. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.